There's a specific kind of confidence in women that men find extremely attractive. So much so that guys will typically go out of their way to be more attentive, doting, and pursuant when women express it. And the thing is, not all forms of confidence are treated equally. So today I want to help you understand seven extremely attractive things only confident women do that not only will separate you from all others, but give you many more options in the way of men. When we talk about confidence, we typically talk about a feeling of self-assuredness, self-trust, a feeling of certainty. And there's nothing wrong with this definition of confidence, but in my book, it's lacking a few tweaks that will make your ability to connect to the right guy exponentially easier. And it's lacking a feeling of empathy. It's lacking a feeling of vulnerability. It's lacking a feeling of emotional openness that can take this confidence from what I call head confidence to heart confidence. The heart confidence is the thing that allows the guy to say, she's compelling and I want to get to know her. I make the guy say, she's something special and intimidating or she's something special and a little cold or distance, or I'm not sure really how to connect with her. So your ability to really merge the form of confidence from here to here will allow you to have many more options in the way of men. The seven types of confidence I'm sharing right now are things you can start stepping into and make a massive difference in your ability to get exactly what you want in a lot less time. The first thing that confident women do that others don't is going to be the giving off clear signals. And here's what I mean by that. Many women, when they connect with men, they engage with men, they are ambiguous or they're mysterious or they're even shady or they disconnect. They don't even make eye contact. And if you are confident enough to give clear signals, you're saying to someone, I'm open for connection. And I'm confident enough to know that if you don't want to connect with me, I still hold my worth. I'm not going to feel defeated. I'm not going to feel rejected. I know that if you don't want to connect with me, it's probably for the best for me, so I'm going to move on. So when you make eye contact, when you drop that handkerchief, when you smile, when you initiate a conversation, it comes from you. You're giving a guy clear signals that allow him to take action that he wouldn't have otherwise. Because the thing is, if you're only giving shady signals, you are only going to connect to the type of guy who doesn't read the room and is going to want to connect with you regardless of your feelings or emotions. And he might feel super confident, but he might also be the kind of guy who's pushy and that will not take no for an answer. And that's the wrong type of guy for most women. The second difference that emotionally connected women who are very confident and express that others don't is going to be a need and a yearning and an opening in their life for interdependence. Here's the thing, on the basic level of dependence, like when you're a child and you really depend on other people for your basic human needs to go into independence, which is a step above where now you can do things on your own. There's more of an individualistic approach to life. You can function in an autonomous way. That's better than feeling dependent, but it lacks a strong feeling of connection. Now, the thing that's happened this day and age is that not only do we go for independence, but for fierce independence. And when you go for that, you're lacking the type of openness that will create the very thing your heart is yearning for at times. So going a step above and being courageous and confident enough to go into interdependence means I'm going to meet some of my needs through you in this relationship. I'm confident enough to express myself in such a way and to navigate the dance that is the vulnerable dance between partners so that I can get my needs met not just through myself, but through you and through doing this with you have a much higher chance of something that I could not have created on my own. The third difference between women who are highly confident and express it in this heartful way that I'm sharing is they know their needs and they express their needs, which is already a confident thing, but they go a step above and they express the rules for their needs. So here's how it goes. If you're not confident, you're not going to share your needs because if you share your needs, you might get rejected. He might not want you. He might go away. So you might keep those within. If you're confident and you can express your needs, you're a step above, which means you can share, here's what I need right now to be able to date a guy. I need to feel safe. So that's courageous. And you can express it to the guy even more. But here's the thing. Sometimes expressing your needs is not clear enough. So there's value in you saying to a guy, I want to feel safe if I date you. But what does he do with that information? If you say, for me to feel safe in this specific situation, I need to know that if we connect, and for example, we kiss and you want to go deeper, and I say no, that you're really going to take no for an answer and not push for more. If you don't push for more, when I say no, I feel safe. 
Now, he has a very clear and concise information that he can navigate his emotions with and say, yes, I can do that, or no, I can't do that. But you don't leave it up to chance. You're courageous enough to be rejected if he doesn't want to do it that way, but also courageous enough to share something that can finally meet a need that you might have just expressed peripherally and maybe neither of you understands what each one is saying. The fourth difference between women who are very confident in this heartful way I'm expressing is they self-validate for beauty. So here's the thing. That doesn't mean that if a guy that you find attractive and intelligent tells you you're beautiful, that you can't open your heart and blossom and feel super excited, you can feel those feelings, but you don't need them to feel beautiful. You don't need them to feel sexy. When you can self-validate for things that you know are true in your heart, when you connect to your sensuality and feel the radiance in your heart and feel the curvature of your, your curves or feel the sexiness of whatever body type you have, when you can feel that way first, you can express it more powerfully. When you express it more powerfully, ironically, you'll be validated more, but you're not doing it for validation. It just so happens that when you first do it for yourself, you get validated more frequently. Now, before I share points five, six, and seven, which are really meaningful, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware of the root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women find love in every continent, every walk of life, and every kind of love challenge you can imagine. When they haven't found love before and they finally found it, and put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions, and in 60 seconds or so, you'll have the answer to the question, why you're still single, and a custom report that's going to share with you based on your specific blind spot, what's the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse the trend you're on and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The fifth difference between women who are extremely confident and those who aren't is they risk being emotionally vulnerable. They recognize that there is no gain in terms of emotional connection with someone if you can't express what's in your heart. So they take the extra courage to express their needs, their values, their wants, their dreams, what they go for, what they love, what they hate. And in doing so, they are taking off layers of emotional clothing that put them in a space where they can finally be seen. Because here's the thing, you can't expect someone to see you if you don't express yourself in such a way that you can be seen. And allowing someone to see you emotionally naked is a very scary thing. Someone can use it against you. Someone can see you completely and say, meh, you're not for me. So there is a risk in expressing yourself this way. But in expressing this risk, you express also the ability to heal, to connect, to be able to have someone see the best of you and the worst in you and love you, still love you. And in doing that, remind you in a way that pretty few things in life can give you that sense of I am worthy as I am right now. It's a very healing experience, but it cannot happen if you're not vulnerable. If you don't take the time to share a little more every single time you connect with someone, especially if it's safe to do so because the guy continues showing up in a way that's healthy, that you can continue opening your heart. Now, the sixth difference between women who are very confident thus far is they say no with little guilt or shame. Here's the thing. It takes courage to say no. Why? Because again, you could be rejected. A guy could say, well, if she says, no, I'm not in it anymore. He could not like it. He could do cold treatment. But when you say no and you understand foundationally why you're saying no, you understand the values that drove that decision and you're committed to those values, then you can say no. And if the guy doesn't like it, you're still living in truth with your values. That doesn't mean you can't compromise on certain things. That doesn't mean that you're not open to new ideas. But once you make a decision, and it's really the best decision for you, that you can say no and not feel shame for it or feel very little shame or very little guilt and ultimately take actions that will show him that you know who you are, that you have a set of grounding principles that guide your life so he can act accordingly. He knows how to act with you when he understands what you really value. The seventh trait of ultra confident women is they have the willingness and the ability to walk away. They, they don't flaunt this or taunt guys with this. They just know. They have this inherent knowing in their being that if after expressing their needs, after talking about it, after figuring out ways they can't meet each other, that they're not going to stick alone for the long haul out of fear that they're never going to fight another guy. They're confident in themselves to know that if this guy is not compatible to their highest needs, that they have to walk away. They have to move to a situation that allows them to express the best of themselves. Now, I hope this is helpful. 
and useful. And if it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel, because this is how I grow and help more women. If you click like and subscribe, and if you want to continue learning how you can attract how you want, without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.